Oh, hello. Happy Wednesday. It looks like we're getting a few people um, coming on right now. So that makes me happy. It's hump day. So I hope you have had a good start to your week and um, that the rest of the week goes smoothly. Welcome to Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe. As always, I'm happy you're here so that, um, and giving me the opportunity to um, share some creative inspiration and doing what I love most of all, and that is sharing creativity with you. A um, couple of quick announcements. I'm kind of, well, let's see who's on. Hi, Mary Lou and Pam. Hello, Sharon. Hi, Doris. Hi, Barbara. Kathy, Kathy Jordan was just with me on a Zoom um, for my team. Hi there, uh, Doris, and thank you, Doris, for sharing as well. Um, I'm kind of watching, uh, flipping a little bit here on my other um, screen to watch the news because we have some bad storms coming through and um, tornado warning, but my Stampin' Peace studio is in my basement, so I figure I might as well just go live. I'll just kind of every now and then check that. Um, good news, something fun happened today. Um, I got the new January or uh, July to December mini catalog and the celebration brochure for July and December. Um, I will, I haven't, I received my personal complimentary copies from Stampin' Up. They send them to each demonstrator. And um, I have not yet received the bulk catalogs I purchased to mail out to customers. Um, and I, it's my goal to have those in the mail before Andrea's wedding on um, June 26th. So um, it's kind of crunch time down to the wedding, two and a half weeks. Took the girls to the airport this morning. They are in Orlando and the rest of the bridal party is meeting them there. One actually lives not too far from Orlando. Um, and my nieces are flying out tonight too to um, celebrate that with them. And Emily sent me some a few pictures of things. Um, they've got decorations and gifts for everybody coming to celebrate. There's, yeah, Andrea and Emily are doing up big, but I'm excited for them. And um, and it's fun to see your adult children having so much fun together and being good friends and. Um, good supports for one another and celebrating this um, this big thing in, in Andrea's lifetime. And I know Andrea's excited to have a couple extra days down there with um, Emily so she can celebrate Emily um, since she graduated. Um, this evening, I'm gonna show you a sneak peek. I had some time after walking and mowing um, to come down here, I needed to cool off. So I just sat here and made some cards. I'm gonna send these to um, the people in my In Color Club because this month they are receiving the Parakeet Party uh, products. I did release my newest class to go. It is the Potted Geraniums. And, um, it includes making eight cards to each of four different designs. One of these is a fun fold card um, and just a really neat color scheme with the real red garden green, some soft suede is in there, and then this beautiful um, soft sea foam. So information about my potted geraniums class to go did go out in an e email um, you can also find it on my blog, stampinpeace.com. And I think we're ready to um, get started. Oh, Pat, you're here live for a change. Good. I'm glad you made it. Who else joined us? Christine. Christine, are you related to Barb Baker? Who's on? Um, let's see. Mary Lou got her new catalog. Mary Lou's on my team. She got her new catalog yesterday. Um, Doris is on my team. Who else is watching that's on my team? I know there was somebody else. Kathy. Uh, so Mary Lou, Kathy, myself, Doris. Yeah. So 
I love it that my team members join me here too, because it's, it's a nice thing for us to give and take and share together. Um, tonight, I'm going to be sharing with you two what I call cards of encouragement. Um, the one sentiment is here for you every step of the way. And the other is reaching out with friendship and caring. And if you don't recognize the products used here, these are actually um, using dyes from the geranium die set. So let me show you um, right now how to make these. While I'm flipping my camera around to my workspace, would you please share this live video and invite others to um, join us this evening? All right, so here are the two cards. And the first, for the first step, we're going to be using the large stamp and cut and emboss machine. We're gonna use it once, but it will give us pieces that we're using for two of our cards, or both of the cards, I should say. Um, and then, for the other die cutting, I'll be using the small um, mini stamp and cut in the boss machine. So I guess I could say big boss and little boss or big boss and mini boss. But we are going to be using not the geranium dies, but the other ones in the collection that support this beautiful stamp set and die set, okay? And after we make our cards, I'm also going to show you some charts I've made that will help people with the stamping and die cutting because there are a, there's two-step stamping and then there's a lot of die cuts that do different things. So I'll make sure to show you all that at the very end. You're having stormy weather too in West Virginia. Yes, we are in central Ohio. Uh, my sister even texted between my meeting and this to make sure I was in my basement. I said, yep. So I guess that's an advantage of having my Stampin' Peace studio in the basement. Now for my first card, I need to cut out this floral grouping, I'll say, this floral set, and I'm going to cut it from the lower left and the top right corners. So obviously I need to do that in two separate um, rolls through the stamp and cut and emboss machine. I do want to give you a little tip before we do this. If your cutting plates are very used, like mine are. Sometimes we can roll through, um, roll our cardstock through, and it'll pick up some of the impressions on that top cutting plate. So to avoid this, I'm going to just add a piece of paper. Now, I should have just pulled a scrap, but I want it to be thin like copy paper um, or our grid paper because I'm going to lay this on top before, lay it on top of the cardstock before I put that top cutting plate on. And this will help, help us not get all of those little um, cutting impressions from the top cutting plate on there. So now, I think you can see this well. I lift this up and it's just perfectly smooth. There's no little um, impressions from my very used cutting plate. So now I have this, okay? This is going to be used for my first card. Look how pretty this is. I wish there was an easy way to lift all this up with the little pe petals in there. There's not. And 
to be honest, I probably don't have the patience to um, put all these little pieces back in, like maybe set it on a piece of cardstock. Oops, there goes my glasses on the floor. Like if I could set it on the card stop and have all those little petals in there. I love that detail, but that's not going to happen, and we're not going to do that. Let me pick up my glasses here. But we are going to be using this piece on our second card. Okay. So now I've got... this area cut out for the one corner, the lower left, and now I wanna do the same thing in the upper right corner. I'm gonna turn it this way, just it's a little bit easier to go through. Again, I'm putting my scrap paper or copy paper or grid paper on top. Since I'm going through here twice and I don't want any of those extra markings from my used cutting plate to get on the cardstock. And again, it's still as smooth as if it hadn't been touched by the cutting blades. So let me get this out of the way. I'm gonna set that aside for now because we're gonna use it again, but on the other pieces, I can use my mini machine and there's that gives me more room. These pop out really easily. I'll just brush them into my wastebasket. Okay, so again, let's look at the first card. Here's the piece. Here's the white for that card. So now I need, oops, there goes my pearl. Now I need the outline of the flowers in real red. I'm going to save the two I just cut for my second card. So I'm going to stick it in the envelope with that. And we'll bring that out in a moment. So now I want to work on adding the flowers. Before I do that, I can go ahead and add some layers to my cards. My card base is real red, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. On the inside, I'm putting white that measures five and a quarter by four inches. That's our, my usual side for the in, inside of my cards. Oops, did I pull the wrong, I pulled the wrong envelope. So let's switch. <laughs> okay, let's switch. So for the first card, who caught that? Did any of you catch that? I pulled out the wrong envelope for the first card. So I'm using, I have to think, Coastal Cabana. Coastal Cabana. Five and a quarter by four inches for the inside. Basic white. And then, and I'll... Let me measure this just to be sure I remember these. Okay, so this piece is four and a quarter. Let me say that again. Four and three quarters by three and a quarter. Four and three quarters by three and a quarter. And I'm adding it to a piece of real red that measures five by three and three quarters. Get a little in each corner here too. And then both of these layers I get that a little more centered and straight. Both of these layers then will go onto a piece of black cardstock. And this measures five and an eighth by three and seven eighths inches. When I get this up on my blog, which I should be tomorrow, 
I will have all the measurements written out for you because I know you all like that. By the way, if you haven't seen today's blog post, I once again used the double six by six one sheet wonder to make um, two more sets of masculine cards with the He's the Man suite. And I made some variations. If you've seen me do the double one sheet wonder, um, probably a few weeks ago, I would say, using the He's the Man suite, um, you'll see some same one sheet wonder, but some different alternate cards, alternate layouts. All right. So now this just doesn't look like anything nice, does it? I need to fill in with some detailed flowers. So I've got two scraps of real red. I'm going to bring this die back in. And because I'm working with smaller pieces of cardstock this time, I can use my mini stamp and cut in emboss machine. And you really just wanna cut one at a time. I know sometimes we're tempted to die cut two at a time, but I think you always get a better impression and better cuts when you do it one at a time. Okay, that's how they were intended to be used, how the dies were intended to work. Isn't that pretty just like that? Like I said, I wish I could lift up that whole thing and have it. I don't know. It's hard though with all those little pieces. Maybe one day I'll I'll venture out and and do that. But for now, I really just want the outline. And I need two of those. I don't think this is No, that's a little close. I'm not going to chance it. pieces just basically drop out. It's a sign of well-made dies and a well-made machine working together, which makes for happy crafters, right? Okay, so now I'm just going to adhere these. Real simple, I'm going to use my multi-purpose glue. Barb, I'm glad you got your, and I never know if I should call you Barb or Barbara, but I'm glad you got your card in the mail. I'm just going to put a few dots of multi-purpose glue on here. You don't need a lot, and you don't need the glue everywhere. Just some key points. I got a couple... I should have pulled out my my fine tip container. And then I'm just going to lay this in. It fits like a puzzle piece. It fits in there really nicely. And do you remember, I think it was last week I gave you the tip that use your sil silicone mat, your silicone craft mat, to lay over that so you don't get all the sticky glue on your, your hands. A few straight pieces of cardstock on there. There we go. The weather outside my window is sounding calm. And I figure if I'm not hearing from my sister, we must be okay. Because I think she would let me know 
if it was getting worse. And I hope wherever you are, if you're having some severe weather, um, make sure you're in a safe place. If you have to get off, please do. We can always craft later, right? But we need everybody to be safe. Barb, same thing with mine. Um, yes, and when my floor gets too messy, I just have to pull out the vacuum. But honestly, I don't worry about it too much when I'm doing the crafting. But after a few days of that, the floor can be awful. So now I have some detailed flowers sitting in here, okay? I'm going to, right now, just add the embellishments to finish off those flowers. So for this card, I'm using these. I think I've been using these a lot lately, the iridescent pearls. Does anybody else have these? Yes, and you can say to me, yes, Mary, you've been using those a lot lately. But they're so pretty, and the small size is perfect for these sets of five flowers. Of course, my Take Your Pick tool makes it super easy to pick them up and place them, whoops, place them exactly where I want them. And that one is sticking to, as soon as I said that, right? Let's do another. <clears throat> if that happens, you see that putty? Just pull it off and then twist just slightly so a little bit more putty appears. That's why that's happening. Just like that. Awesome. Now, I'm going to finish off the center of my card. So I'm going to use another die cut from the Geraniums Dies collection. And this time it will be the, and I don't even know, where did my dies go? Huh. They're here. They are on this table. I know. Here they are. So there's one label die in here. And it pretty much will fit um, most of the sentiments in the potted geraniums stamp set. I'm going to first stamp my sentiment on here, and I'm choosing to use the one that says, here for you every step of the way. So I think this is a nice um, sentiment when you're sending a card of perhaps support or caring, and it can be used for lots of different occasions. Um, I have a niece who got some, some bad news today and, whoops, what happened to my, oh, um, who got some bad news today. And I think, you know, this would be a great card to send her. It's bright and cheerful, but that sentiment alone says, I'm here for you. If there's something I can do, I support you. I'm thinking of you. I love you. So I will now center that within my die. And you're going to love this die. Wait till you see this cut out because not only does it cut out the outer shape, it also has a pretty detailing right along the inside edge. Can you see that pretty detail? That dotted detail all the way around? It just makes it, oops, I just smeared it. Adds a little more um, elegance, and I'm bummed about that because I just smeared that. Let's see if I can fix it up with my artist eraser here. Yeah. I'm going to have to, you know, I'm giving away cards tonight. I cannot send this off to you. 
um, with that smudge. And it, I did it with my finger. So let me pull out another piece. Nobody wants to get a card from Mary that's been smudged, right? I tend to do that with the Memento because it doesn't open and close. You can see the inside of my lid. It doesn't open and close. We don't make these, um, but it doesn't open and close like my like our regular Stampin' Up! inks. And I do tend to get it on my fingers just by closing up that ink pad. But if you happen to be the lucky winner of this card, I don't want you to have a smudged sentiment. So thank you for bearing with me for these extra seconds. Okay, much better. And I'm going to put this on with some dimensionals because that's how I roll. No surprise there, right? It is a very pretty die. And you know what? Don't limit the use of this die, this one in particular, to just the um, stamp set in the bundle. You know, it works great with the Prada Geranium sentiments in the set, but don't um, limit it to that because it will work so well with so many of our other um, sentiment stamps. Now I wanna go, and I think it's pretty just like that. You could add a bow here or something, but I wanna bring in one more die from the set. And that is this little, I'm gonna call, call it a flower pick because I think it just adds a nice fun detail. So let's stamp that. And in fact, I'm gonna stamp two at once because I know for sure that I'm going to be using a flower pick on my second card as well. I love that Stampin' Up! now it has the in, the uh, the images printed on the inside of that label so we can stick our stamps right on top of it. And this way I know too when I'm cleaning up, I take a quick look, make sure I got all the stamps. If I don't have one in here, I know I better look on my craft table before I leave the room and make sure I get that put away. Because there's nothing worse than having a random stamp, and I I do have one. Like, I have a random stamp right now. You're the best. I don't know what set this goes to because I obviously did not check one of my stamp sets before putting that away, unless it's from a paper pumpkin kit. That's possible because I was working on some of those. Now in this set, trying to be careful not to get the black on my fingers again. In this set, there are some little words, and I've been using this a lot. Um, these little words, smile, friend, just for you, fit perfectly in on the inside of that flower pick, and they're easy to stamp on. So for this, Actually, for both cards, I'm using the word friend. Is that the right one? Yes, it's upside down. And I'm going to stamp the word friend inside each of those flower picks with real red ink. And just tap very lightly. Don't hardly even push because then you're going to get too much ink between the letters. And there's, a, there's enough room on the inside of that that it's easy to fit these tiny sentiments in there. So you don't have to think, oh, it's too small. No, there really is. Just make sure your block, with your block, you can, you can see the whole top of that 
flower pick at once so it's easy to put that sentiment in there. I'm going to cut both of these now, one for this card and one for the second card, but I'm going to roll them through separately. Does anybody know why? Why am I rolling it through separately? I'm doing that so to keep the cardstock crisp, just in case. Did you notice though, for my mini, I actually pulled out a new set of cutting plates. Although I don't know if that looks, that second one looks that new to you because I have used it a lot in the last few days. So I'll just center the stamped image within the die, put the top cutting plate on and you're good to go. But yeah, I didn't want to, you know, since we just had talked with the big machine about keeping our cardstock free of those um, little lines. And it happens more with very, very used ones. You can see my top plate here um, is still looking pretty clean. Not a whole lot of lines in there. One thing I will tell you, to preserve the life of your cutting plates, keep one as the bottom plate and one as the top plate. All right. The top plate, you aren't going to have to flip very often. But trust me, if you do this, you will extend the life of your cutting plates. The other thing to note is when you have it and you're using the same bottom cutting plate over and over, because you want one to be the bottom and one to be the top plate, this will start to kind of lift up in the center. What is that? Convex? Concave? Convex, I think. Kind of will form like a little bubble. If you can push down on that. If it moves, you can... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. If you can push down on it, meaning it's kind of <clears throat> starting to curve up, then you're going to flip it over. No longer pushing down, leave it that way for several passes. <coughs> Excuse me. And again, I'm going to use it this way. When it starts to puff up, and I can push down on it, I know that it's time to flip it over again, okay? But really, if you use one for the bottom and one for the top and keep it that way, it really does preserve the life of these. You'll get much longer use out of all these. Now, if I were to cut these, or not cut them apart, but leave them on that same strip, I would have to run, you know, the second one would be run through the machine twice. And that's where we worry about getting those little grooves and lines on there. Typically doesn't happen on a plate that you can still see through pretty well as compared to like my other plate that's very used. All right. But that's an easy fix with just going over it with the um, a piece of typing paper, a graph paper, just a very thin paper. All right. So let's finish up card one, and then we will make card two. I'm going to use a mini dimensional on the top part of the flower pick, and I'm just going to tuck it tuck the bottom of it behind that sentiment. And I, I want it sticking out. If you don't want it sticking out that much or you maybe want it over in a different place, do that. But I want mine to stick out from it. And then I'm going to add a tiny bow made from white baker's twine. Now, you know, a lot of times when I adhere bows, I use a mini glue dot. 
right? A mi one mini glue dot on the back, right on the knot of the bow works. This is a tiny bow, so the knot is very tiny. So for something like this, I typically do a dot of multi-purpose glue. And I lay this here, just lay it. Instead of holding it in place and possibly getting that glue on my fingers that I might transfer to, um, say, the next card I'm working on, I'm just going to lay a clear block right over the top of it. And I just leave that there. I can even push this out of the way. And I just leave it there for a few seconds to dry. Just put it where you can see it. So that's a, a, a quick and easy tip for adhering very small bows using the multi-purpose glue. And all you need is a tiny dot of glue, right? That glue goes a long, long way. And it only takes a few seconds. All right, let's make the second card. So we have the real red card base with the white cardstock inside. I'll put the sample here. You'll see that I'm using the very same colors, okay? But I've changed up where those colors fit into the layers. I've changed up the color of the card base, and then I changed up each of the three layers, although all of them are all the same size. So in other words, this Coastal Cabana, same size as the white. The black, same as the red. The white here, same as the black on the first card. But just by making some changes like that makes it, um, I don't wanna say, you can make more unique cards, okay? They're not all going to be the same even though you're using the very same layout. And I'll go over the dimensions with you once again. It's not quite centered for me. So my Coastal Cabana for this card, or my top layer, is four and three quarters by three and a quarter. Let me double check that. Three and a half. Four and three quarters by three and a half. Did I say that wrong on the first card? I can't remember. Four and three quarters by three and a half. The next layer under it is five by three and three quarters five inches by three and three quarters. And this white with just a small border showing is five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. Again, this video should be up on my blog tomorrow, probably not in the morning. It'll probably be in the afternoon, late afternoon possibly. I have two appointments tomorrow. Um, so look for it late afternoon or tomorrow evening, tomorrow. But I will have, of course, you can watch the replay right here on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe on Facebook. But I will have all the photos and the cutting dimensions and supplies used on stampinpeace.com late Thursday afternoon or early evening. So now you see what we're doing with these pieces we initially cut out from the basic white cardstock on our first card. Tiny bit of multi-purpose glue. I'm gonna set it down in the lower left corner. I'll lay my silicone mat over it. And remember, the glue will hold to the silicone mat if there's excess glue, but it won't be sticky on the mat. And it comes off the mat super easy as well. But just a little tip to keep glue off your fingers as much as you can so that that stickiness does not get transferred to any other part of the card where you don't want it. 
or another card that you will make afterwards. And now I'm going to place this one. And you could use um, adhesive sheets as well. Put your cardstock on an adhesive sheet before you run it through the stamp and cut and emboss machine. If you prefer that method, that works well too. And now I'm ready to finish this off. So here, let me move this. So here I'm using this label die in a different way. On the first card, I actually stamped and cut the sentiment with that die. And here I'm using it as a background for the sentiment. Same label die. Make sure you can see me on the screen here. It has that same pretty detail, of course. This is what the die looks like from the back side, the cutting side. So that's how it gets that pretty detail all the way around. I'll pop this up in the center of the card with some dimensionals. I need to close that up, don't I? I think that's pretty well centered. And then I have a half inch strip of cardstock. This measures just about three inches. So a half inch by three inches, I'm going to stamp another sentiment. This one is reach out with friendship and caring. Another great sentiment um, to offer somebody some support to let you know or to let them know that they are loved and cared for and thought of and that you're there for them. If you're like me, that's one of the cards, um, types of cards I send the most of, one of. A lot of thank you notes too. But just because I'm here for you, that sort of thing, I send a lot like that. Okay, we'll let that dry for a moment. Now you might want to fancy up the ends of those, and there's a couple ways to do that. You can um, simply cut an, at an angle on each side. That can be quick and interesting look. I'm going to use the Banners Pick a Punch, and for these punches, you can cut half inch, three quarter inch, or one inch. Okay, it's designed that those widths will fit right into the grooves. We also have another one called, um, what is it called? Lovely Labels Pick a Punch, and it has two different types of end cuts as well. The Banners Pick a Punch is sort of my go-to. Oops, didn't get it all the way in, did I? There I go. Slide it out and then I'll flip it and cut the other end. And then I'll also pop this one up on dimensionals or you could you could lay it flat either way. But I'm just going to use two minis on this one. Whoops. One thing to think about too is because I've got basically got two layers of dimensionals, the bigger dimensionals are basically right here, right behind the label here. So I can put my um, smaller 
dimensionals for the top layer, kind of in between those, or even on the outside of those on that white layer. That way I don't have the first set of dimensionals and the second set of dimensionals right on top of each other. So um, just think something to think about if you're sending it through the mail. The dimensionals usually do not cause a problem, but if you're putting two layers on, just something to think about. Spread those out so they're not one on top of the other. And then I'll add the flower pick. Again, just putting a single mini dimensional at the top and tucking it under that larger label. And I will finish it off with, here it is, my white baker's twine. Oh, did anybody see what I've missed on this card? I kept thinking it doesn't look quite finished. Does anybody see what I missed? I guess we did that stamp set or that step earlier on the first card, but I missed adding the bling to the flowers. You're probably thinking, I wonder if Mary's going to use those iridescent pearls again, like she keeps using on all her projects lately. Well, I'm not. I chose something different for the white flowers. I'm using those red rhinestones. So just a fun little accent to the white flowers. Again, I'm just going to lay a clear block on top of that to adhere that bow. No mess with the glue, right? The red rhinestones, the um, small pearl, small rhin plain rhinestones, all of those are the perfect size, the small size. Um, just the right size for these flowers. Oops, come on. Except it needs to be in the middle, Mary. Okay, so now we have two cards and we used accent dies from this bundle. And when I say accent dies, what I mean by that is they are not dies that specifically line up with the stamped images. All right, we can use the... Um, label one with multiple pieces, or we can use it just as a background or with any of our other stamps, either images and or sentiments. Um, but this does not coordinate with any one image in the stamp set. So that's what I mean when I say um, dies that enhance, okay? They don't match up perfectly with a stamp. All right, so what do you think of the cards made today? Let me move my samples out of the way. I'll put these side by side or one on top of the other. So what do you think of these? Would you send these? Would you make them? Would you send them? Would they send a smile to somebody? Absolutely. I'm sure they would brighten somebody's day. And think of all the different color combinations that you could make. The same card, same layout but gazillion different color combinations, right? So I'm going to be giving these two cards away. Um, if you are interested in 
receiving one of these, possibly, please type the words. Um, we'll do go with potted geraniums. That's the name of the bundle, potted geraniums. And actually, I didn't want to pull, put all those dies away because I want to show you something. I told you, and the people who, um, and I will post the charts to my um, blog post with these cards. Although they don't, the charts don't really go with these cards, but they go with the other parts of the bundle, the stamp set and the dies. But I want to show you how these work. Um, so go ahead and type in the comments, potted geraniums, if you would like to be entered into the drawing to win one of these cards. I went ahead and made this chart because there are a lot of stamps in here. There's um, two-step stamping, and then we have what seems like a huge amount of dies. And sometimes we get caught up looking at all these dies, and it can be overwhelming. Um, I've even had... Yes, Kathy, I do have a class to that. You can find it on stampinpeace.com. Um, or I'm not sure, do you get my email newsletters? It went out on a newsletter. If not, you can, and for anybody who's watching, listening, if you are not receiving my email newsletters, and my blog newsletters and my email newsletters are two different things, but they are the things that have the most information for you. So you can go to stampinpeace.com and um, subscribe to the blog. You can subscribe to the newsletter or both right there. But yes, information for the potted geraniums class to go is on stampinpeace.com right now. So there's all these pieces, right? So I thought I'm going to show you the two-step stamping and then the pieces that cut out each of these. So you stamp once, and I stamped on, on these three, I stamped off first, meaning I, I inked up my stamp, stamped it on scrap paper, and then stamped onto the cardstock. That's how you get the lighter shades. Then the next step would be to um, stamp the coordinating piece at full strength. So here you see the two clay pots. Here you see the two parts of the geranium blooms. Here you see the two parts of the stems and leaves. And in the last column is um, both layers together. And then I've got the dies. So here you stamp the pick, then you stamp the sentiment, and then you're ready to die cut it. Um, for, and this is dirt or it could be ground. There's no two-step stamping for that. It's just a single stamp, and then you're ready to die cut. There is a rim or an edge to the clay pot. If you wanna do that, you could um, stamp again and just cut out the top part of the pot, pot and lay it on top of the first one. Um, <clears throat> here, let me, I want to show you something. Okay, so here's the die for that. Here's the two-step stamping and the die for that. Okay. You could just stamp the, the one layer at full strength. And it gives you a different kind of flower, a different looking flower than the two-step one. And But that would be cut out with the same piece. All right. And then... You stamp the leaves, you stamp the detail, and then you cut cut it out with this die, all right? So there are pictures of this um, that I will have on my blog post. Now, the other part of that is <clears throat> we have some dies. You can stamp and die cut geraniums, or you can just die cut them. And you get two very different looks. And in my potted geraniums class, you do both. Two of the cards, you stamp and die cut. And two of the cards, you're just um, die cutting the geraniums like here. So let me lay these out. 
So on these, you're going to die cut two pieces, all right, two for the blooms and two for the stems and leaves, and then you're going to layer those. So this plus this equals this. This plus this equals this. But to see it out, laid out with a chart and the dies like that just makes it so much easier for you, for me, even I, even after I make the charts, I still will look up and refer to them, um, especially if I've maybe worked with this set for a while and then put it on the shelf and bring it out weeks or months later. It's a nice refresher to have the charts. So the charts, again, will be on tomorrow's blog post. Remember, late tomorrow, not in the morning because I have a couple of appointments. Um, and there's also an advertisement for the Pot of Geraniums class. But the whole Facebook Live replay, the cutting dimensions, all of it. But I figured even though we didn't use these, for tonight's cards. I think it's a great resource to share with people and that's why I put it together and that's why I'll be sharing it. And who knows, who knows in another Facebook Live, um, perhaps you'll see me use these charts. And if not, you've got them for your use, okay? All right, everybody, have a great Wednesday evening. Watch the weather, stay safe. Um, I will be back here on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nave on Facebook at Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And in the meantime, I will choose two lucky winners. I'll put all the names um, into the drawing if you have typed the words potted geraniums in the comments. All right, everybody, have a good night. Stay safe. Um, and happy stamping. Bye-bye.